What's going on guys, Arax here. Welcome back to another video for Dauntless. This is the sixth and final episode in a series of Dauntless weapon guides we're putting together in light of the game entering open beta. The last episode went over the chain blades, but today we're turning our attention to the newest addition to the game, a weapon that offers both speed and range, the Warpike. Again, I want to thank the guys over at Phoenix Labs for very kindly sponsoring this series. We've teamed up to cover all five of the available weapons, and across these videos we've gone over everything you need to know from the basic moves and combos all the way up to some overarching weapon theory. So that way, if any of you guys do plan to jump in and give the game a shot during the open beta, you'll be able to do so with a good understanding of the weapons beforehand. And if you've missed any of the videos up until this point, then you can find the complete playlist linked down below. The Warpike is an interesting weapon. Part polearm, part ranged blaster, it offers fast, fluid combos capable of wounding a behemoth to open it up for massive damage, and at the same time you also have the ability to attack at range by charging your meter through your attacks and unleashing that energy in a high powered etheric blast. On the surface it may seem a little simple, especially on the combo front, but the pole armor Ford Slayer's incredible flexibility through the fluid combos that can be combined in a manner of different ways to suit your current encounter. So if speed, mobility and flexibility sounds appealing to you in combat, then the Warpike might just be what you're looking for. Now, to begin with, the Warpike can be broken into two parts. You have the fast attacking, close range combos that take full advantage of the polearm portion of the weapon. Attacks inflict wounds on your enemies, these glowing scars, and attacking these wounds will see you deal more damage. Your teammates can also take full advantage of this too, so in team play, having a Warpike user really allows you to exploit a behemoth's weak spots. However, on the flip side, you also have the ranged portion of the weapon. By attacking, you build up meter, and this meter can then be banked as an energy source for your projectiles. The more meter you bank, the more powerful your attacks, and this allows you to dish out devastating damage at much safer distances. Both are important components of the weapon, and both interlink rather nicely, but since the latter ranged attacks hinge on your meter, which comes from your melee attacks, it makes sense to begin there. Now on the combo front, if you go simply by what the game tells you, then you really only have two combos to worry about. But the nice thing about the Warpike is that once you have these two basic combos down, you can seamlessly blend them together, weaving between the different moves to create your own combos in battle. First up you have the Piercing Flurry. This is five consecutive X inputs, and if you press and hold on the final fifth hit, you'll perform this flurry of stabs, piercing your target. Now on the combo front, your X attacks are your core damage dealers, meanwhile your Y attacks, as you'll see in a moment, have more value when it comes to building meter. It's also worth noting that during your X combo, you can input a direction to the left or to the right to side hop mid combat. This little hop has iframes or invulnerability frames, so if timed correctly, you can use this as a dodge. Quick tip for you too, if you find it a little bit hard to pull off the side hop without your character rotating instead, then hold down X whilst you push left or right, and you should do it every time. Moving on from there, your Y attacks, you have the Aether Harvest. This is three consecutive Y inputs, it's a very fast and also flashy move, and given the speed, this is your meter building move. To be clear, both moves build meter, but this is by far the fastest option. Additionally, it's important to note that as your meter builds, you get a small damage boost in the process. The more meter you have, the more damage you do. To balance this out, unlike most other weapon meters, the Warpike gauge depletes at a pretty rapid rate, so you really need to keep up the attacks to keep it maxed out, and once you get it near to the top, that is when you bank the meter, but we'll cover that in just a moment. Before that, as mentioned earlier, you can also seamlessly blend these combos together to essentially create your own combos on the go. While you can link them in whatever way you please, note that when you get to the end of the combo, either X or Y, that will bring you to a momentary stop before you can start up again. And that's where your rolls come in. Rolling is a great way to reset a combo, and much like most other weapons, you can also press X or Y following a roll for a follow-up attack. Pressing X will see you perform this jumping leap, Meanwhile, pressing Y will perform this cartwheel style slam. Both great combo openers and good ways to seamlessly transition from the end of the combo into a new one. Then moving on from there to the final part of the weapon, the ranged attack. This works in two parts. At the top of the screen you have your meter, and by now you know that the more you attack, the more it builds. But as mentioned, it also rapidly depletes. So when you get it to the top, or near the top, you need to bank it. Pressing RB will bank whatever meter you have, and this small bullet-like icon will appear below. This is what you use to perform your ranged attacks. You can do this up to three times to bank multiple shots, so it's handy to do this as you go so that you always have something in reserve just in case you need it. You can bank your meter at any point, but naturally the closer you are to the top, the more powerful it will be. With your shots stored, holding down RB will assume this projectile stance. During this, you can aim wherever you want to fire and let go of RB to release the shot. If you hold it for too long or you overcharge it, then it will fire off in a random direction as if you've lost control, so try to charge it just enough so that the beam concentrates in the middle, and then when it does, let it out. Not only does this do great damage, 
but this is also another great interrupt move. So if a behemoth is charging towards you, a nicely timed pike blast can make them topple, in turn providing you with a great opportunity for damage. So attack fast, bank your meter, exploit the wounds you create on your target, and unleash your pike blast for powerful attacks. That is how you use the war pike. So, now that you know how the weapon works and you understand what the different moves are used for, how do we tie it all together? Again, much like the previous videos, I'm going to cut together a few extended gameplay clips to show you the war pack in action. To begin with, I like to open up the fight with some rapid Y attacks. While they may not be quite as damage focused as your X attacks, ultimately I want to build meter and bank it. I'd rather use the beginning part of a fight while the behemoth is pretty predictable to store up my shots so that I know that I have them for later. Additionally, the higher I can keep my meter, the more damage I'm doing in the process, so there's definitely value in playing with your meter in mind. Once I've banked the shots I need, I'll focus more so on the core combos, creating wounds and attempting to focus on them where possible to maximise my damage. If you're playing in a team, it'd be a good idea to try and apply wounds on multiple locations so that your team can take full advantage of them, but depending on your target, that can sometimes be easier said than done. Amongst my regular X combos, I do still try to work in some Y flurry attacks because their speed allows me to maintain my meter. Remember that the X attacks aren't great at building meter, so in an ideal world, you want to build some, then dip back into your X attacks and focus on the wounds for the damage boost. Of course, anytime a behemoth tries to charge at you, doing a move that can be interrupted, then take full advantage of your ranged attacks. If they go down, then you have a great opening for damage, but also a great opening to replenish that shot that you just used. Also keep in mind that ranged attacks don't have to be reserved solely for interrupting. If the behemoth performs an attack that controls space or you are forced out by their enraged state, then you can just take full advantage of the ranged capabilities to attack from a safer distance, but I personally like to save them four times when they really make a difference. But either way, that's pretty much all there is to it. The Warpike is a very mobile weapon and it's a lot of fun to use. The fluid combos feel great and sending a behemoth flying is also super satisfying. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed these videos and found them helpful. As always, if you have, then a like would be super appreciated and be sure to comment down below if you have any questions. But until next time, thank you very much for watching. Take it easy. Catch you next time. Peace out.